Good morning, Grace Station. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. It's been up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. A little sleepy myself. <laughs> a little sleepy? <laughs> yep. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome. I am lead pastor at Grace Station. This is my doctor, wife, chef, cook, <laughs> house cleaner, worker, all anointed, all, all kinds that. of good stuff. All that. All that and bag of chips. Sonia, huh? All that and all the chips. You guys ready this Good morning. morning? Let's see who's on. Go over here to live. Hi, Kim. Hi, Georgia. Yeah. Kim and Georgia, we see. They're on. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we'll wait for a couple minutes for people to get on. You guys ready for a word this morning? I wanted to thank you guys for all the prayers. I am feeling better. I'm still a little stuffy. But I am definitely a whole lot better. <laughs> I'm gonna let uh, gonna let Doctor here help me out a little bit this morning on some scriptures that I want to read. Okay. I'm your lovely assistant, Ben away today. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and God is good. He's definitely got some good Thank stuff to show us in the Word today. Oh, Cheryl. All right, praise the Lord. Ready, ready, ready. You say ready, ready, ready. Yep. Yeah. All right, we got some people jumping on now. Yo, I want everybody to give a few minutes for everybody to jump on so we can worship together. Mm. We got a worship song for you. Yep. All right, now we start to get some people. Can what's me? up, Kim? What's up, Kent? How's Kent? That was Kent. Yep. What's up, Josh? Hey, Josh. J Bar, Pastor <laughs> J Bar. Do we know her, Shonda? I don't know I if I know her. She's connected to him. He gets the same name. Oh, <laughs> maybe he adopted her or something. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know I'm going to have some fun and joke around. You guys ready to worship? Yo, Kathleen. All right, all right. Good to see everybody on there this morning. You know, I was thinking that, man, we might only be a few weeks away, maybe going back to service. Oh, yeah. I know there's some churches having service, but I just want to make sure everybody out there, let me know how you guys feel about, and if you feel comfortable, maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll, we'll go back at it. I can't wait. <laughs> yep. Just not the same for me. It's 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 hard for me to preach from the seat. <laughs> well, I can move out of the way and you can I jump still, on up and I do still, your thing. I don't know. It's something about when we all come together at the station okay. and, and everybody's there and all that is anointing is flowing and, mm -hmm. and and Georgia walks in and all of a sudden the chair starts moving and, <laughs> and all that power she's carrying. That's and, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I got my front row hecklers to keep me in line and I miss all that. Me can't too. I can't wait till we get back. Hopefully in a few weeks we'll definitely get back. We've got a lot of a lot of new things. Let's go Sarah. Tammy. Uh, Sarah. All right. Tammy and Sarah. They're on. Somebody put yay. Oh, Shonda. Shonda ready to go back to church. Ready to go back to and church. church we are the church, but we're ready to go back and, and, and assemble together under the under the building and bring all that anointing together and that power. Mm. Whew. Glory to God. All right, baby, you ready to worship? Well, we're going to let Hillsong worship for us today. We got a okay. special guest today. We got a special guest they're today. called Hillsong. Yeah, they're And they're going to be thinking, what a beautiful name it is. <laughs> we're going to zoom them in. No, <laughs> zoom Praise in on God. the video. Yeah. But anyway. Um, that day's so, coming. All right, now. Let's go, y'all. Let's worship. Everybody come together here. Hmm. What a beautiful name it is. You are the word of the beginning. Come on, y'all. Mm. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Sing with us. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name. Beautiful name. 
nice having Hill song just show up at our house, huh? <laughs> huh? Anytime, any place. Yeah. That's what I love about right here at the Gray Internet. Station Home Quarters. Amen. We don't own the rights to this song. No, no we don't. <laughs> you have to do that disclaimer. But Jesus does. Amen. Amen. So we thank the Lord. You know, yeah, we thank the Lord. We thank God for each and every one of you guys that's joining in and today. Mm -hmm. Let us know where you're from. Everybody, I just love the comments. Everybody put in a lot of comments, communication, mm -hmm. but also listen to the word, of course. Don't don't, get, get, so, lost, right? don't get so busy talking to everybody and, <laughs> and telling everybody what happened to you in, in the last week or so, and you missed the word. We want to pay attention to the word. But I do love mm -hmm. that people are interacting and they're socializing and, and tell us where you're from. I know we got a lot of people on there. It looks like a few hundred people on this morning. So things are doing great. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. There's going to be a few thousand people watch this video today. You know what we've been talking about? And, and man, I'm glad you're helping me out today because honestly, it's been a rough week for me. And I didn't get a whole lot of time in the Word, but, you know, the Spirit of God is in me and the Spirit's going to lead. Yes, He will. And, and you know, it's funny, though. There's something I was going to preach on last week about, you know, I've been talking about Left Behind. I'm not a fan of Left Behind, obviously. And I'm going to kind of recap on where we're headed today in the eschatology of our studies today. But I want to recap because it's so important to... You know, I know this is a this is a a deep study of God's word, and a lot of people don't spend a lot of time here where they really need to, and it's 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 really hard to teach on and study and preach on because it's not it's not like a favorite, you know, it's not what people really are are drawn to. There are more to uh, situations in their life and stuff like that, and I get that. But they've been used to that. Yeah, they're but used now to this that. This is the difference, right? Right. Right. Okay. And and <laughs> so, this series of left behind, you know, I don't know how many more weeks. You know, I kind of just let the spirit lead. You know me; I've been kind of in it and preach a while on it, and then I get away from it, and then I come back. And but you can always go back and watch part one, two, and three of this because I really put a good foundation on this series, and we're on part four today. Oh. And and I want to recap on you know we talked about the four major beliefs. You got your all millennium who thinks that they don't really know when the in the times coming and then you have your post uh you have your your post who thinks your millennium who thinks things are going to get better and better and better as the years mm -hmm. go by mm -hmm. before the coming of christ and then you have the most common is your dispensational uh millennialist who thinks that god is going to there is going to be a second coming of christ and he's going to come back and he's going to resurrect the dead and he's, you know, the final judgment is going to take place. And then we also have the preterist where I lean more to that. There's two types of preterists. There's a partial and there's a, a full preterist. I'm leaning more to the full. So everybody knows, I, I believe a little bit out of each one of these. Mm. And, you know, I'm not stuck on just one, but I do lean more to the full preterist in my studies as I'm furthering myself in these studies. I'm seeing, like today, you're going to see that what I want to talk about today, you're going to see why I lean more to a full preterist than I do any other beliefs. Then we talked about the, I, I keep talking about, I'm going to run over these every week. So it's so important. And when you're understanding God's word, the five keys that I came up with, and that's knowing the author statements, who the author is and getting to know the author and, and you know, his, his experiences in the Bible as he's teaching and writing these letters and getting to know the audience, uh, the relevance audience, the, the, audience statements of who the writer is writing to mm -hmm. and who is listening. See, this, this is the biggest, this is what leads people to the biggest deception is reading the Bible is because they do not do this and they take things out of context, which is key. Number three, keeping things. Can you, can you grab him? He can't get in. Oh. Our boys wanting to get in over here with us. If you can let them in over there. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Um, 
Key number three is in understanding your Bible is proper context, keeping things in proper context. You just can't take things out of something that's 2,000 years ago and bring it over and apply it to your life. That's why it's so important to see who the writer is writing to and who's listening and keeping things in proper context. And then you have your historical timeline, mm -hmm. seeing when the, the letters was written um, is very important. But the thing that I really want to talk about today is key number five is the time indicators or time, time statements. Um, whenever you start to break down the four major studies, the biggest problem that the futurists have is when they get to these time indicators. Mm -hmm. There's no way around for them. Uh, they try to put up a fight and they try to come up with reasons why the Bible says all this, but they cannot get around these time indicators. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to focus right on time statements. Okay. We're going to go to Matthew 3 and we're going to start at verse 1. You guys good? You ready? Here we go. Now keep in mind, you guys can go back and watch part 1 through 3. This is part 4 today. Um, I don't know how many more weeks I'll be staying in this, but uh, you know, I'm just letting the Spirit lead me here. Praise the Lord. Thank but you. Matthew chapter uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 1. If you don't mind, Ben, can you read down to verse 12? And I'm, I'm going to kind of cut in a little bit as you're reading. Okay. Matthew 3, 1. So in those days came John the Baptist. Okay, now see, there, there's a time statement there. In those days. So mm -hmm. he's the writer is, is re referring to those days. Okay, go ahead. Came John the Baptist, mm -hmm. preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Uh-huh. And saying, repent ye for the kingdom of of heaven is at hand now now stop there you know as you can see he says repent change your way of thinking for the kingdom of god is at hand that hand means it's near it's not two thousand and something years later he's saying this kingdom that god is bringing mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven is at hand that means it's near it's at your hand but go ahead for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord, make mm -hmm. his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, this is verse 4, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Verse 5, Then went out of him Jerusalem, then went out to him, sorry, mm -hmm. Jerusalem, right, and all Judea, mm -hmm. and the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Verse 7, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers. Right. Who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, now see, as you can see there, he's given them a warning there uh, that the wrath is about to come. It's the kingdom of God is near. It's not 2,000 and something years later mm -hmm. that it is near. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for mm -hmm. repentance. That, and think not to say where we, in yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Mm. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Of the trees, therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is honed down and cast into the fire. Verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, mm. whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. There you go. That's uh, verses uh, 1 through 12. As you can see here, you know, he's saying that the kingdom of God is at hand, and then he's giving them, 
you know, he's warning them that you got to flee from this wrath and, 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 you know, his fork is in his hand. So he's giving a lot of time statements in there. This is about to take, this is about to happen. This is about to take place. And it's very important for people to, as you read these, see, I've read these chapters a long time ago. I've read them before, but I never really looked at the writer. I never really looked at, you know, the time statements. It's near. And, and as you can, as you incorporate those, then you really start to see the truth that this kingdom is at hand. All right. Now, now I'm going to, I'm sorry. It was at hand then. Yes, it was. It was at hand right, right then. then. Okay. Now, see, one thing that I, I want to point out, first of all, is, you know, he's saying that the kingdom of hand is at hand, but he never told Adam and Eve that the kingdom was near, right? He never told Abraham or David or he, if we go to, uh, go to uh, Daniel eight twenty six. So he never told Malachi that the kingdom of God is near because it wasn't there. Actually, he even told the earlier prophets where we're going to Daniel now, chapter eight, verse 26, that it's, it shall be many days. If you can read 26. You can see it's what the Lord showed Daniel. Daniel eight twenty six. In mm -hmm. the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision. Yep. For it shall for it shall be for many days. See, he's told them to seal the vision that it's going to be many days. And and this is in the sixth century uh, you know, BC. So if we go to we're gonna jump over to Revelation twenty two ten. So okay. he tells the earlier prophet not uh, to seal the book because it's going to be many days. And we're talking about the 6th century B.C. So it, it, there was going to be many days ahead before the, before the vision was going to, or the second coming of Christ. As I know you, how you guys would relate to that better. If you go to Revelation 22.10, what, what does he say here? And he said unto me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Mm -hmm. For the time is at hand. So he he tells John here, don't sell the book here because the time is at now. It's it now it's near. So he told the early prophets not to sell uh, to sell the book because it's many days. Then he's telling John not to sell the book because the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. Now I got we're going to run through a lot of scriptures on time statements, and I'm just going to let her read through these. And if you guys need a copy of those, I do have them all written out so that I can send these to you. So just let me know if you'd like to have these time statements. I actually pulled out 101. There's 101 time statements. And <clears throat> there's more in the scriptures, but these are the ones that really stands out in, in reading and understanding your Bible. And I'm going to kind of let the doctor run through these. Um, if you don't mind. Okay. Which one? Me? Start at one. Oh, one. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 3, 2. Who warned you to flee from the wrath about to come? Matthew 3, 7. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Matthew 3, 10. His winnowing, winnowing fork is in his hand. Matthew 3, 12. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17. He says it again, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, mm -hmm. Matthew 10, 7. Verse 7, um, seven um, next one, number 7 is, You shall not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes, Matthew 10, 23. Mm. The age is about to come, Matthew 12, 32. <clears throat> the Son of Man is about to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and will then recompense every man according to his deeds. Matthew 16, 27. There are some of those who are standing here who shall not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming yeah, in that, his kingdom. That's one of my favorite ones, Matthew 16, 28, is because Mark, unless there... In, in, huh? Mark Yeah, it's also in Mark in 1. Nine and yeah, it's in the other Proverbs. Gospels as well. But in, unless there's apostles running around today alive, I mean, he's basically saying there's there's some standing here that will not taste the death until they see the man coming until in his kingdom. Until they see the man coming in, in his, his kingdom. kingdom. Okay, uh, number, number, number 11. 11. When the owner of the vineyard comes, mm. what will he do to those 
vine growers. He will bring those wretches to the wretched end and will rent out the vineyard to other vine growers who will pay him the proceeds at the proper seasons. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you, mm. talking about the Jews, yes. and be given to a nation producing the fruit of it, which were the Gentiles. When the, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they understood that he was speaking about Not them. Matthew yes. 21, 40, 41, 43, and 45. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Matthew 24, 34. From now on, you, Caiaphas, the chief priest, the scribes, the elders, the whole Sanhedrin, shall be seeing the Son of Man sitting at mm. the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Matthew 26, 64. Mark 14, 62. Luke 22, 69. As Jesus said in 14, yes. the kingdom of God is at hand, again, Mark 1, 15. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the vine growers and will give the vineyard to others. They, the chief, they, the chief priests, scribes, and elders understood that he spoke the parable against them, Mark 12, 9, and 12. This generation will not pass away until all these things take place, Mark 13, 30. I'm going to go to the book of Luke. It yes. says, who warned you to flee from the wrath about to come? Luke 3, 7. Mm -hmm. The axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Luke 3, 9. His winnowing fork is in his hand. Luke 3, 17. The kingdom of God has come near to you. Luke 10, 9. The kingdom of God has come near. Luke 10, 11. What therefore will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will hmm. come and destroy those vine growers. And will give the vineyards to others. He said this three times. Yes, the scribes that's and the why it's important. Yeah, understood that he spoke this parable against them. Luke 20, 15, 16, and 19. Hmm. These are the days of vengeance. In order that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Hmm. Luke 21, 22. This generation will not pass away until all things take place. Luke 21, 32. Daughters of Jerusalem, stop weeping for me, for, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Mm. For behold, the days are come when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wounds they never, that never bore and the breast that never nursed. Then they will begin to see the, say to the mountains, Follow on us, and the hills cover us. Luke 23, 28 through 30. Compare this to Revelation 6, 14 through 17. So this was what yeah. Luke was prophesying. Yep was also being spoken about in Revelations. 26, we were hoping that he was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Luke 24, 21. I will come to you. In that day you shall know that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Lord, what then has happened that you are about to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? John 14, 18, 20, 22. Hmm. If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? Mm -hmm. John 21, 22. This is what was spoken. Of. That's talking about John who wrote yep. the book of Revelation. Exactly. Which was the last prophet or apostle to die. This is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. And in the shell in the last days, Acts 2, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. He was fixed. A day. He has fixed the day in which he is about to judge the world. In righteousness, Acts 17, 31. There is about to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Acts 24, 15. Yeah, I want to, I want to just kind of jump in there. See, you got to see who they're talking to. And, 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 and keep that in mind when you hear these scriptures. You can see that they're talking to the audience. The audience is them that day that, that the writers are writing to. Go ahead. Correct. There is about to be a resurrection of both the righteous and wicked. Mm -hmm. Acts 24, 15. As he was discussing righteousness, self-control, and judgment about to come. Yes. Acts 24, 25. About to come. Not for Abraham's sake only was it written that faith was reckoned to him as righteousness, but, but for our sake also mm. to whom it was about to be, re about to be reckoned. Romans 4, 23, 24. If you are living according to the flesh, you are about to die, Romans 8, 13. Mm. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about, about to be revealed, about to, be revealed to, to us. us. 
Romans 8.18. It is about the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is nearer to us than when we believe. The night is almost gone. The day is at hand. Wow. Whew. Romans 13. You can, you can take breaks. I can talk in between. If okay, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as you can see, time after time, he's saying, you know, it's near. The day is at hand. And, and these writers, are they, they know. Mm -hmm. They know that the second coming of Christ is about to take place in the first century. You cannot take. And we just went through 36 scriptures and we got more to go through. And I want to kind of go through these because I want people to see that you can't, you know, there's 101 scriptures here. You just can't get around these scriptures and to bring forth to show that the second coming of Christ, the resurrection of the dead and the final judgment took place at 70 AD at the destroying of the, uh, the Jerusalem temple, Harriet's temple then. And it's important. So if you don't mind, you doing all right? <laughs> yeah. It you is. wanted to read some word. You got it. <laughs> it is already the hour for mm -hmm. you to awaken from sleep. For now salvation is nearer there. to us than when we believe. Mm. The night is almost gone and the day is at hand. Romans 13, 11 through 12. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Romans 16, 20. The time has been shortened, 1 mm. Corinthians 7, 29. The form of this world is passing away, 1 Corinthians 7, 31. Now these things were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come, have come. Yep. 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Mm. We shall not all fall asleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, mm. and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 52. Marathma. Marathna. No, wait a minute. Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Marathnatha. Right. Okay. The Lord comes. Mm. 1 Corinthians 16, 22. Not only in this age, but also in the one about to come. Ephesians. About to come. Ephesians 1, 21. The Lord is near Philippians 4, 5. The gospel was proclaimed in all creation under heaven. Uh, Colossians 1, 22, compare it to Matthew 24, 14, um, verse 14. Romans 10 and 18, 16 mm -hmm. and 26. Colossians 1, 5 through 6. 2 Timothy 4 through 17. A lot of cross-reference scriptures here. Revelations 6 through 7. Yeah. <clears throat> These things which are a shadow of what is about, about to come. About to come. Um, Colossians 2, 16 through 17. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. You, brethren, are not in darkness that that day. That day, that you, the brethren. day yeah. shall, should overtake you as a thief. First Thessalonians 4, 15, 17, 5, through four, 5 and 4. Five. May your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Mm. It is only just for God to it is it is only just for God to repay with affliction those who afflict you mm. and to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. 2 Thessalonians Chapter 1, Number 50. 6 through 7, Godliness <laughs> holds promise for the present life and that which is about to come. About to come First again. 1 Tim, Timothy 4 and 8. 51, I charge you that you keep the commandment mm. without stain or repro reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 <laughs> Timothy six fourteen, Storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for that which is about to come. So that they might take hold of that which is, is in life indeed. Mm -hmm. Which is life indeed. First Timothy 6, 6, 19. In the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self. Avoid these men. For of these are those who enter into households and captivate weak women. These, these also oppose the truth. But they will not make further progress for their folly will be obvious to all first or second timothy three one through two yeah 
five through six and eight through nine. Yeah, I'm gonna comment there. It says in 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 the last days, talking about the the first century, those last days that they were in, that there was going to be, you know, men's for the lovers of themselves. And you hear, keeping things in proper context, you hear that, I've heard that so many times that they're talking about like, hey, all this is going on now, the end is near, the, you know, the time is, Christ is getting ready to come back. See, they take it something that's meant for the first century church and they are they're bringing that all the way over 2000 and something years and applying that to us okay go ahead oh uh, where was i <laughs> <laughs> you all right where was i uh, um i solemnly charge you in mm -hmm. the presence of god and of christ jesus who is about who is about to judge the living and the dead second timothy 4 mm -hmm. and 1. god after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and many days in these last days has spoken in these last days has spoken, spoken mm -hmm. to us in his son hebrews 1 1 through 1 and 2 rather yes i like how he says in hebrews 1 1 and 2 that in these last days so you can see you know he's talking about those days but go ahead well, in the, yeah, yeah his fathers he mm -hmm. in be well in the times past, the Jews had been spoken of to yeah. by the law and the prophets. But right. in the last days, they were being spoken to by the Son, which they refused to believe would, in. Exactly. So <clears throat> that's the relevance, I feel, that that Hebrew scripture really was trying to point out. I mean, we can go on and go on through. I, I, you know, I didn't know how hard it would be, but... You know, I'm a little you under the weather. No, I'm a little bit under the weather. And so they that's... all are all, and are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for mm -hmm. the sake of those who are about to <coughs> inherit salvation? Hebrews one fourteen uh, about to inherit this inherit salvation. Hebrews one fourteen. He did not subject two angels the world about to come. About to come. Hebrews two five. And hell, <laughs> and have tasted the powers of the age about to come. About to come. Hebrews six five. Mm. For ground that drinks the water which often falls upon it, and brings forth vegetation useful to those whose sake it is also tilled, receives a blessing from God. Mm. But if it yields thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near a curse, and its end is for burning. Hebrews yes. six seven and eight. When he said a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Mm. But whatever is becoming obsolete is growing old, is ready, is, gro is growing obsolete and growing old, is ready to disappear. Ready to disappear. Hebrews 8, 13. The Holy Spirit is signifying this, that the way of the heavenly holy place has not yet been revealed. While the outer tabernacle is still standing, which is a symbol for the present time. Mm. Accordingly, both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make the worshiper perfect in conscience, since they relate only to food and drink and various washings, mm. regulations for the body imposed until a time of reformation. Hebrews 9, 8 through 10. Compare that to Galatians 4, 19, Ephesians 2, 21, and 21 through 22. Uh, chapter thir uh, 3, Ephesians 3, 17, Ephesians 4, 13. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of mm. the good things about to come, but, Hebrews 9 and 11, now once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away mm. sin, Hebrews 9, 26. For the law, since it has only a shadow of the good things about to come, Hebrews 10, 1, as you see the day drawing, the day, capital D, drawing near. Hebrews 10, 25. Mm. The fury of a fire, which is about to consume the adversaries, Hebrews 10 and 27, for yet a very little while, he, he who is coming will come and will not delay. Hebrews 10, 27. For here we do not mm. have a lasting city, but we are seeking the one that is about to come, come. Hebrews 13 and 14. Yep. Speak and so act. As those who are about to be judged by the law of liberty. See, it says about to be judged. See, it's, it's, I'm going to keep pounding that because the time statements there clearly shows that they're talking to the first century church. 
to James 2 and 12. Mm -hmm. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. It is the last days that you have stored up your treasures. It is in the last days that you have stored up your treasure, mm -hmm. uh, James 5, 1, and James 5, 3. 1 and 3, rather. Mm -hmm. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord, James 5 and 7. You too be patient, strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand, James 5, 8. Salvation ready to be revealed in the last times, 1 Peter 1, verse 6. He has appeared in those last days for the sake of you. 1 mm -hmm. Peter 1, 20. They shall give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. 1 Peter 4 and 5. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. 1 Peter 4, 7. For it is time for judgment to begin with the household of God. 1 Peter 4, 17. Mm -hmm. As your fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ and a partaker also of the glory that is about to be revealed, 1 Peter 5, 1. We have the prophetic word, which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts, 2 Peter 1, 19. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. 2 Peter 2, 3. In the last days, mockers will come. For this they will willing, for this they willingly are ignorant of. 1 Peter 3, 3 and 5. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with the roar. And the elements will be destroyed with intense heat. And the earth and its works will be burned up. Since all these things are to be be destroyed in this way what sort of people ought you to be in the holy mm. conduct and godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the lord second peter 3 10 and 12 the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining first john 2 and 8 the world is passing away in its desires first john mm. 2 17 it is the last, last hour first john mm. 2 18 even now many antichrists have arisen for this we know that it is the last it is the last hour first john 2 18. Wow. compare matthew 24 23 through 34. this is that of the antichrist of which you have heard that it is coming and now it is already in the world stop there we got to read this one again because you know people talk about the antichrist is coming but he's saying the important part there, he says, this is that of the Antichrist. This is that which is you have heard that is is coming. Mm -hmm. And now it, it is, is already, already in the world. The spirit of now, the see, Antichrist. You can't, you got a writer saying that the Antichrist is there. It is now. This is that. This is what Joel prophesied. This is happening right now. You can't take that out of context and put that in our future somewhere. That's You just can't do that. Or That's even not our, good our present. Huh? Even in our present. Even right in now. our present, yeah. Like right now. Yeah, <laughs> even now or the future, which like, would be the future of the that. For them, right. Yeah, but yeah. then they're trying to say that what they were talking about is happening right, right and, now, and, and which is our present. If you read that <laughs> again, and that's uh, that's First John 4, 3, he says, this is that. And he's talking about Joel, what Joel prophesied. This is that. That's of the, the prophet. Yeah. That the prophet Joel spoke Yeah, of. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Antichrist, which you have heard, that is is coming and now is already in the world. Okay, we're at number 88. We got about, what, 15 more? For certain persons have Excuse crept me. in unnoticed. Those who were long before marked out of this condemnation, out for this condemn condemnation. Mm -hmm. Also, these, about these also... Enoch prophesied, saying, But hold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly. Mm -hmm. Jude 1, 4, 14 and 15. But you, beloved, ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they were saying to you, In the last times there shall be mockers. Mm -hmm. Following after their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones who cause divisions. Jude 1, 17-19. To show his bondservant the things which must shortly take place. We're in Revelations 1, 1. 
The time is near, Revelations 1, 3. Nevertheless, what you have, hold fast until mm. I come, Revelations 2, 25. I also will keep you from the hour of testing, which is about to come upon the whole world, Revelations 3, 10. I am coming quickly, Revelations wow. 3, 11. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is about to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, Revelations 12 and 5. About to rule. And in her, the great city Babylon was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth, Revelations 18, 24. Compare uh, Matthew 23, 35 through 36, Luke 11, 50 through 51. To show his bondservants, the things which must shortly sure, take yes. place, Revelation 22 and 6. Behold, I am coming quickly, Revelation 22 and 7. Do not seal up the words of the prophecies of this book, for the time is near, Revelation 22 <coughs> 10. Compare Daniel 8 and 26. Behold, I am coming quickly, 22 12, Revelation. Yes, I am coming quickly, Revelation 22 20. That was, one, that was 101. I am coming quickly. Now, now quickly, I don't know if uh, 2,000 and something years or, you know, they keep prophesying that he's coming soon. He's coming soon, 1988. Yeah, they prophets out there, he's coming soon. It doesn't happen. Year 2000, he's coming. You know, when Obama took office, he's coming. And <laughs> Trump, now you have Trump and Pent. You had Trump in it, and then he's coming. They keep prophesying and coming up with all these things, but nobody's reading the time statements of the Bible, which we just gave you. And I thought it was very important. Thank you so much for You're reading welcome. all that. That is so important that we, we ain't just pulling out one or two scriptures and saying, hey, they're talking about the first century church there. We're, we're pulling out over 101. It's 101 time indicators that it was about to happen at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important in your eschatology because, see, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He, he's given us a sound mind, uh, you know, and if you have that spirit of fear, thinking that judgment is coming, right, it puts you in fear, and then it puts you in condemnation, and you know, eight, uh, Romans 8, 1 says that there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ, so it, the Bible can't contradict the Bible, and yeah. that's because it, you got to rightly divide, you got to you got to use the five keys that I talked about knowing who the writer is writing to you know as you as as you can see we went through even the <clears throat> end of it there the end of the book of revelation one of the things about revelation people need to know if you look if you look that up to see when it was written futuristic people will say it was written you know after uh, 80 90 to 80 100 but that's wrong because it was written through 80, 60 to, to 70 when the, the, the temple was destroyed. And you can prove that by, how can you prove that? By time statements and things that's written in, in, in Revelation that shows it was talking about the first century people. Right? And also, the first century, uh -huh. even though the first century is the first 100 years, right, A.D.? Mm -hmm. To 8100, mm -hmm. they added, they made Revelations be in 8100, which would have been the end of the first century right, of the church, right, right? Right, right. First century. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the Revelations was written at the end of the century. No, exactly. <laughs> you see what I mean? Or mm -hmm. that the events that took place mm, that's were good. at the that's end of the century. That's a good catch, yes. Because they're saying, oh, that must be the end of that century. But the generation that he was talking about was a 40-year generation. So it couldn't have been A.D. 100. If, mm. Come on. <laughs> you see what I mean? If yeah, that generation exactly were 40, 40 years. So that would have gone from Jesus to A.D. 30, when he began his ministry, to that 40-year mark, which would have be A.D. Seven. You know, it, man, just not eighty thirty, yes. but it was eighty yeah. twenty nine. Yeah. So eighty, because he was born in BC four. You know, so then that would right. be AD twenty nine when he started his ministry. Right. <clears throat> and when he prophesied when AD thirty, when he prophesied in Matthew twenty four thirty four that this generation shall not pass mm -hmm. till they mm -hmm. see all things fulfilled. Mm -hmm. All prophecy was fulfilled. Right. That they that generation was not going I mean he was warning the Pharisees 
I, I want to show something else that I, I, I hit on last week. It's something that came from you from the week before. But let's go to Matthew 5.17. I'm going to touch on this again, if you don't mind. Go to Matthew 5.17. We're going to touch on this again. We've got about 10 minutes left. It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the mm -hmm. law or the prophets. Mm -hmm. I am not come to destroy, mm -hmm. but to fulfill. 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. So, first of all, we know, I taught last week that heaven and earth is talking about the nation of Israel. You can see that all through the Old Covenant or Old Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, so, if Jesus has not fulfilled all things, then we're still under the law. If you read that correctly, you will see that... If he has not fulfilled all things, then we're still under a law. And clearly, when you go through Apostle Paul's teaching, he talks about how we're no longer, you know, Romans 6, 14, we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. So we have to see that all the things has been fulfilled at that time at 70 AD. It's so important because you've got, the majority of the church is looking for things in the future for all this to take place and something and they look for the book of revelation as something that's in our future when it was in our past i mean we got evidence we just showed you a bunch and we, i can continue to teach on this and i ask for everybody to study this for yourself all, all you got to do is just get online and look up preterists and, and preterist, it'll, it'll start showing you the proof that the difference between preterist and a post-millennial. And, and you got to study this for yourself. I think when people study for themselves and they read it for mm -hmm. themselves, they actually comprehend it more for it themselves. It starts to yeah. make sense. Or it starts mm -hmm. to, you start to see a pattern. <laughs> right. And yeah. I can, we can get on here and keep throwing word at you, word at you, word at you. But until you really gather this and study it for yourself and, and get it deeply, rooted you're going to see that 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 the majority or the the, the most common belief the dispensationalist uh, post-millennial this post-millennial is is leaning to a futuristic event that's already happened in the past and why is that so relevant why is it so for relevant? us today like i it, think it what, you, what you're bringing yeah is evidence uh -huh. of to, to really show people what has already been done. Yes. And now what we need to move on to, yeah, right? Yeah, it's to, for people to know that we are the new Jerusalem, that we are the new heaven, we are the 21. new new earth, yes. Well, it's talked about. Yep. And see, and, but why is it so important? Mm -hmm. Because you have so many churches today that setting up buildings, legalistic buildings that putting people under an old covenant and telling people and putting fear into people that Christ is going to come back and judge you for everything that you have done and, and see they're they're building now modern day temples. They're so, actually uh, buildings are turning into temples again mm -hmm. when when it, it shows that the the word shows that the kingdom of God, the, his kingdom come and it's within us mm -hmm. and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit now. So, that the building's not the temple. The building's is not for a legalistic old covenant old system. Right. right, for those, it's good that we have buildings to come together and, and to learn. assemble and learn, yes, and praise God for the victory, for the finished works that he's done already. Yeah. That everything that all the prophecy, the, the earlier prophets, prophet has been fulfilled and now we can walk in that victory and that freedom and that love and and you know that's the most important everything that he's came to give us that we can now have so the dispensation the dispensation uh, wait a minute. dispensational dispensationalism yep. the views of them are that we're in a holding phase and that yeah, there's they, something left to they do they came up with a, de a delay a theory a delay theory it's so, a delay theory mm -hmm. that Christ came and then he stopped doing what he was going to do and he's going to come back later on, but that does not line up with the word of so God. So we're in a holding, in other right. words, the churches have been built upon the pre-millennialistic viewpoint mm -hmm. as pre-millennial. So most, if they're not saying that the works have been finished and that 
we are now in the last in the you know the revelation yes. 21 or 22 mm -hmm. then they are setting it up based on a pre millennialistic view yes in other words yes. so which or post millennial yeah post millennial yeah they believe parcel's been done but there's a, there's a future event still going to take place of the second coming of Christ so a thousand but years reign but hasn't we just happened? Yeah, no no reign? they don't they think all that's still going to take so place so that's pre millennial right so that's a pre yeah. but the millennial right. is, is <laughs> the thousand year reign has not happened yes. yet right okay so that's a pre, pre Millennialism. Yeah. Okay. So that's so what I mean. That's why so it's, when you have that in mind, uh -huh. then you're going to live a certain way. Versus exactly. if it's the finished work, then you're going to live a certain way. Your right. views will be a different way. So, yeah. As a, you know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. In his heart. Right. So if you think that that's a future event going to take place, it it plays a difference in your whole belief and it plays a difference in how you think and how you act. Mm -hmm. You're not going to receive the fullness of mm -hmm. Christ. You're not, not going to receive the finished work, the, the complete fulfilled prophecy of everything that Christ has came to give us. If you still think it's going to happen someday and, and we are the new heaven and new earth, we are the new Jerusalem. You know, he told him, he says, you know, you look, the kingdom of God is not over here and here. The, the kingdom is within us. And people are looking for him to come back and build this kingdom. No, he's already came, brought his kingdom, and it's within us. So Paul's views mm -hmm. were really contrary to mm -hmm. the popular view. Oh, definitely. Right? The popular yes. view that even, you know, I mean, he does have wordings about God is coming back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's coming back soon and be ready in a moment too. So he did have that at his time. He was waiting on the coming of Christ with the rest of the apostles. Uh -huh. But their waiting was two different ways. Paul wasn't about staying in the temple and doing the temple, you know, worship and stuff. I right. guess. So he wasn't under that law mentality no, anymore. No, no. He came the, out of that. Yeah. The other ones. But yet Christ, the 70 AD, the temple was still standing which at that moment it was contrary, I mean, very contrary. And well, yeah, stark and it still is there. today. But with this physical temple being there yes. before eighty seventy, mm -hmm. then that was not a popular view amongst the Jews. I'm no, sure. no. So Paul, you know, had a different approach, even though the coming of Christ had not come just yet, right? Because the temple was still standing, yes. but they were always. Looking forward, but to they, it. Knew, they it knew it was coming. coming. As you can see through the scriptures, all the writers knew it was about. It was at hand. It was near. It's going to take place. All the apostles knew that they were close yeah. for it, and that they didn't know what hour. He says, "You don't know what hour is going to come," but they knew it was close. And when he said that, some of you standing here, yeah, will not be, will yeah. not see death. I think he was talking about John, of course. Well, sure, right? Cause yeah. Peter died in 68 AD, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, and Paul did too. Yeah, so then too. there was some John. standing there, which had to be John the Revelator, who was writing about the revelation of all of this, because God had given him the vision. So he fulfilled that prophecy yes, yes. of having being there when the coming well, of the Lord exactly came to his right. kingdom, that's right? Correct. So it didn't mean all of them. Yeah, the some of the them. ones that standing here yes. shall not taste death till death until they see the son of man coming in his kingdom right and so who saw him coming <laughs> who saw him coming john, john the revelator the john in the revelation yep. he saw him coming right yes, yes, literally right. like Come if you on. read revelations you will see yeah, he that he actually him. saw him yes. come in his kingdom at the end of revelation so yep. that fulfilled that prophecy yes it did as well yes so did. now was he going to take he wasn't dead when he saw this revelation right Right. So that was true. And John, when John died, then the end of that prophecy had to be done. Yeah, it was done. At the end, at, at the end, right? At the destroying of the temple. Right. It was done away with. <laughs> so this is my point. Mm -hmm. What are we referring to at the end? And what are we worried right. about? Like bombs coming and the whole earth being destroyed and the whole night, yeah. which we know when that the, wasn't going to be. It but wasn't. Back to See, back to what the temple represented to the Jew, which mm -hmm. was heaven and earth. Yes. See, that's the key. Mm -hmm. We look at heaven and earth a different way. Right. Because we're not a Jew. Right. And we weren't taught that the temple was the location of where heaven yep. met earth. That was their 
heaven and earth. Right. And he said, I'm going to destroy this old oh, heaven and earth. And you're going to have a new heaven and earth. You're going to have a new temple and I'm going to dwell within you. I'm going to, and my kingdom is going to be within you. That's what he was talking about. And, and see... Keep it we're we're not living from we're not living from the inside out. We're still or the majority of people are still living from the outside in because mm -hmm. they still see a futuristic uh, event that's going to take place. It's so important this, to read your Bible, yeah. to read the scripture with understanding. Now, from this point of view, mm -hmm. you've been looking at it from the pre uh, well, millennial sure. view. Have that. been taught that now. There's a finished word preterist point of view, futuristic. That now. Read these scriptures verses. Come on. With that mindset, you will get a different picture, a totally different picture than you did before. Yep. Which the, makes all the difference the, in the world. The five keys I gave them is, is in the Bible. The five keys, when the Lord revealed that to me, and I started implementing those in my studies of really seeing time statements and who was listening and who they're talking to and, you know, knew about the author and, and the time that the... the I mean, when they're writing a letter to I mean, Revelation, it shows you in verse four that they're writing a letter to the seven churches. I mean, you that's reading someone else's mail. So you can't read someone else's mail and apply that to your life. And and it's that simple. Yeah. And when I did the Bible study, uh, uh -huh. actually, it was uh, uh -huh. we did a uh, discipleship classes mm -hmm. and I showed the map. Of the time of the, the where those oh, seven yeah. churches were in uh -huh. vicinity to Jerusalem and Judea and this whole mm -hmm. world, you know, when you get a clear picture of where that was versus oh us trying to apply these different churches to us, like yeah. the churches nowadays, the Christian churches. Oh, okay, we're the the church of brother we love. We are the Laodicean church. We are the you know yeah. trying to make those seven the Philadelphia those seven churches apply uh -huh. to your church, you know. They were actually physical churches. Yeah, and Grace that Station wasn't in there. That were, were, they were referred to. And right. you could see them where mm. they were on the map. Come on. And that really puts you, you know, takes you from this obscurity to yes. the truth of what this these people were talking about, what John was referring to. Mm -hmm. People have made the whole entire book of Revelation symbolic and applying everything. But really, all of it wasn't in the beginning. That beginning part, he was specific about what this revelation of the coming of the kingdom was going to be, mm -hmm. and what it was. So he was that those that letter he wrote was to the seven churches of the Book of Revelation. So the Book of Revelation was written to the seven churches that were then present. And yes, the and I want to add this too. We're almost out of time, but I want to mm -hmm. add this: when you study your it's good to have an interlinear scripture analyzer so you can go in and see the original text because a lot of times it'll say uh, the end of the world when it really says the end of the eons or end of the age. And that's a difference. See, people read it literally. They say it says the end of the world mm -hmm. and they take it literally as the physical world when actually in the original Greek it says the end of the age, the end of that time. And, and those are very important things to know and and that's the problem is a lot of people read it literally instead of studying the word deep enough to get the full revelation of it, it the way it is right you know something i want to talk about i just want to spend about five more minutes i praise god like i said if any of you guys need these 101 scriptures because it's a good tool to have because there's a lot of people who want to come at you and say oh that's not true so when you start you start showing them that it's about to take place or soon or it's out of hand, then you have all these scriptures to back that up. It, it, it sinks. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. So I do have those. I can send those through you through messenger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll yeah, put the link in yeah I got it together. All right. Uh, whoever wants that, let me know, inbox me and I'll send those to you. The next thing I want to talk about real quickly is the Lord has been putting a lot on my heart. And one of the things I spoke about, um, well, there's a couple things. I, I, I put up a post I like for you guys to go back and read a post. I'm talking about the last days. It's, it's real plain and simple. That'll help you too. But another thing that the Lord is putting on my heart that I see a lot of people that that's hurt. And he's really... You know, he showed me in a post, and I wrote this on Facebook, that it's good that we go into Scripture and we find God here, right? Mm -hmm. 
And we find God in the Word because He is the Word. And we find God there. But He also He reminded me finding God from within. Because that He's a living God that's within you. Mm. Yeah, it's good to find Him in Scripture. But it's powerful to find the living God that's within you. To have a relationship with you. So you can walk in the victory walk in that power that he's given you walk as the new heaven walk as the new earth walk in everything that we already have in christ instead of seeking for something that we already have so right? externally yeah so mm -hmm. dying to the flesh mm -hmm. so that the, the life of mind yeah. the life of christ which is or the mm. the breath of god that was already breathed into you come on won't be overshadowed or <laughs> by the outer Mm -hmm. Right, because that's what happened with Adam and Eve. That part was already there and always there. Yes, yeah, right. But what took precedence over that Among. was now their awareness of what was around, around them, them. Their, their own limitations, their own fears. Like he said, who told you? Who, who told, told you, you you were naked? You were naked. And what does naked mean? Right, exactly. Where did that term even come up? Mm -hmm. Like nakedness, right? Nakedness, that's something that they didn't, they weren't aware of what nakedness was. Mm. So now, who gave him that de them the definition of nakedness and that they themselves were naked? See, what did that term get introduced? When their eyes were awakened, when they were no longer eating from the tree of life. Come on. And they began eating from the other tree that was both present. Both of them were there. There. So they had the option to do one or the other. But as they ate from one, the other one diminished. Yep. Birth. And now the flip is a bit, you, you have the ability to do the flip because now he took you back to the spiritual so that the, the flesh or the nakedness or the carnality the carnal, yep. will not be precedent, take the precedent like it, it always It's basically has. even the old covenant versus the new covenant. It, it's been obsolete, it's been done away with to bring forth, to get you out of that carnal mindset into the spiritual living God that's within you. Well... The carnal, the mm -hmm. law was, and it keeps, the law only applied to the carnal. Yeah, exactly. So that, is, if it's alive, then it means your flesh is still alive, yeah, that's right? that's exactly Of right. knowing good and evil. Right. But the spirit is opposed to, now Bring you die life. to that, and that life, tree of life, Whew, is on. under a different operation. It brings back the, back, it brings back, back the tree of life. The tree of what? Life. Yes. Is all life. like, like what he meant. Bearing like to be. fruit Not every death. 12, yeah, bearing fruit every 12 weeks that is continuously bearing fruit. Man, I could there get was this no some, more death. you're going to get me preaching. There's and no more sorrow. You're going to get me going. <laughs> But uh, I'll, another thing I want to touch on before we go, because I know we only got a couple more minutes, man. I appreciate you guys hanging on here. Is the Lord is definitely, I'm, I'm, man, I can't wait to get back to church because he's leading me and bringing people together. Because honestly, he showed me something that's very powerful. And I want everybody to think on this. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to pick your brains. I'm going to get together and, and, and it's time for change. Because he began to show me that the world has failed you. The world has failed us. Change the awareness. Right? And when the world has failed the people, the people become hurt. And then the hurt people hurt people. This is what you Yep. People start hurting people. Then people start to run to churches looking for a freedom looking to get out of bondage, looking to get out of their hurt, and they mm -hmm. go to a church, right? Mm -hmm. And then the church puts them through condemnation. They add on to the hurt. So you got people going through a world system, right? Getting hurt through the world, going to people, getting hurt by people, and hurting people. It's two ways. And going to a church to be hurt. So God has given me revelation to bring people together with the knowledge of knowing that, right? That we can come together in unity. Oh, speaking of unity, it's uh, uh, Martin Luther King's uh, holiday we're celebrating. Monday. Actually, he would have been 93 uh, Friday, the 15th. He would have been 93 this year, but we want to celebrate his holiday. Mm. But unity, you know, because mm -hmm. he brought unity. And yeah, that's holiday. what I feel we are going to bring... God is going to use us to bring unity back 
and, and to bring deliverance, true deliverance by the anointing and the power. Because see, we're coming from a truth. We're coming from the finished works of a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to wait for it. We should be operating from that and bringing in unity to bring deliverance to everybody's situation. Because I'm telling you, you, you can admit, you can, you know, you can act like you got it all together, but I'm here to tell you, we are broken people because we came from a broken world through broken people through a broken church. Well, I can't wait. It says that, but as many as received him, they gave them power to become the sons of Mm -hmm. God, even to them that believe on his name, right? Come on. And the whole earth is groaning for the manifestation. Come on. The whole earth. Who? Who is groaning for the manifestation. Is that Galatians? Of the sons of God. Yeah. Let me say bye to the peeps before we get off. So... No, that's Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So, being mm. when you say unity, you have earthly and then you have the sons of God. Not the sons of men, the son of God. Sons of God. And so, or God's creatures. God's beloved. God's anointed. Which will bring that difference. The difference maker here. <laughs> so that's what I think we're on the road to recovery. Yes. Of getting that awareness changed. Yes. And getting it off of what it shouldn't be on, which is worrying about judgment and condemnation when it says there's no more condemn now no condemnation to them who are, are in Christ who walk walk not after the flesh, which is but governed by the, the law. Yes. But after the spirit. It all comes together. So if you get your mind off of the law and being judged by the law and fearing mm. that, then you are free to be the sons of God and manifest that. Whatever all of that mm. you know encompasses, right? Yes. So it's a process we understand because everybody doesn't have that viewpoint. So you are, you know, plagued or <laughs> things happen to you or around you. Because everybody doesn't have that same mindset. So you are subjected or you have to deal with those, you know, individuals. And then that brings up some of the old stuff you may have dealt yes. with and that's the... before. And now you're trying to get away from that. But yet, theirs triggers yours. So mm-hmm. you get these triggers yep. that you have to now overcome and try to rise above them. And rise above that. But it says we bear, we bear the infirmities of the weak, right? Mm-hmm. And we bear that because we have to deal with that, right? And 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 but we have to now overcome and help them to overcome. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and try to help people overcome it. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing, That's and I'm just gonna be for. real. It's time for 2021. I'm gonna be real, and I'm gonna come right at people, and I ain't gonna be mean. It's just gonna come from the spirit of God, and it's gonna come from truth because everybody's broken. I mean, you know. Honestly, I see what we've done here is we threw, you know, people come into our church and we fed them truth, which is a great thing. Don't get me wrong. We fed them truth and they need the truth because it's the truth that makes them free. But also we need to apply things that's going on in their life situational and we bring in people together in unity and dealing with everyday issues is very important as well. And see, that's what God is showing me. He He brings forth members of the body that brings, there's people out, there's pe- like you guys, there's some people out there that's been through some stuff. Mm-hmm. You've dealt with you dealt with kids that's been uh, on drugs and that are addicted mm-hmm. to drugs. You you dealt with kids and or sisters or brothers that's been through a lot of stuff. And God's telling me, see, you can be used to bring healing to people, right? But you also have to be healed yourself. 
And the yeah. first thing is, is focusing <laughs> on yourself. You got to be healed yourself. You got to be healed yourself. You got to be committed. You got to be open to say, look, I've seen it. I've done it. I've been a part of it. Yeah, I've been broken. And now I'm ready for deliverance myself. Because in order to bring deliverance to someone else, you got to be there yourself. You got to have that discernment. And, and that's what God has given me for this next season of Grace Station. This whole year, I'm telling you, God's going to... It, we're going to have town meetings. I know somebody, you know, you've heard of that before, but it's time for us to bring the po broken people together and not just throw scriptures at people, but get down in the dirt and, and, and take the people who's been through stuff and you let God use you to bring healing and understanding to people and unity together. That's the only way it's going to come out of this. Churches are having churches every Sunday, every on every Sunday, every corner, and they're throwing scriptures at people. And people might it might help, it might give people a sense of hope. But is it really bringing the freedom? Is it really bringing the wholeness that Christ came to give us? Well, to the, ultimately, mm. you're allowing the Spirit to work. Hallelujah! Through, through people being honest and yes. transparent. To help someone else, right? Now, mm -hmm. that helps, yet that transparency or that healing takes place when you're able to even deal with it, talk about it, you know. I yes. mean, there's a psychology to this. There's a <laughs> yes, a mental thing because we're dealing with the mind. Yes. And then there's some, some strongholds that have still are still up in that. Even while you're in the process of getting over and you, you can help somebody by saying, I know I deal with this. This is what I want the Lord to help me deal with and then they can then relate because yes. or you can relate to them so exactly. you have to be a hundred percent healed while you're helping somebody Come on. else now sometimes you ain't a hundred percent all the way you ain't gonna be a hundred percent but, but you can, god can of, use that yeah. brokenness yeah that's he says he he takes he takes ashes and he turns it into beauty so when one thing I've learned a long time ago is you can't fix others, but when you help others, it fixes you. So you know, what I just said something was very powerful there. When you help others, it fixes you. It help fixes you because now you see God using you in stuff that you've been through. Man, praise God That's for that. That's what I said. That's yeah. part of the healing. Yeah, yeah it is so part you're, of healing. <laughs> that there, you're being healed while you're help healing. Mm. So therefore, you're healing as you walk, yes. you're getting healed as you walk to them. Yes, so, you're learning. Do you know when that comes? Ha when that happens? Not always. You know, I feel like the Lord knows, and it's going to take Him to do it it's all. Going, he's it's going. He's by His Spirit. He's <laughs> bringing the Spirit. He's bringing the power. It's going to be. I'm telling you, Grace Station ain't going. It's it's a new season. Grace Station is bringing back the power of God, healing, the anointing, and and we're going. Not only are we going to give people truth, because we know the truth is important, but we got to first catch catch the fish before you clean them. You got to first get, reach out and be relational and loving people, and and getting into where. Because their focus, like you said earlier, they're focused on what's going on on the outside. They haven't learned to operate from the inside. They only know how to to uh, scrape um, or fight to what's happening in their life according to the outside. So we got to teach them that there's an inner part of a power that's within us that given that's given us victory to operate from. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a lot of hard work. But I want to praise God. I want to end this because we went way over. Uh, thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you guys. We love you. We love you. We love you. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for 2021. Uh, I'm hoping in two, three, maybe four weeks, we're going to get back together at the station. This time we're going for change. And we want to change that curse region that we are in. And cursed it, those who are under the law, under the curse. And everybody so that's the under curse that law has come because of how much the law is, is being dispensed. So now grace, grace has yes. to be, you know, on on top. That, that, that let grace reign, reign. Mm. Let grace reign, not the law reign. So, but that's going to take renewing of people's minds. It's going to take going out, reaching others with the truth of this, and then trying to help them understand it fully. You know? Yeah, God so, bless. God bless you all. God bless you, Robert. We're I see excited. Robert's on there too. So what's going to happen and what God has in store for us in this new day? See you guys soon. We're out. Go Browns.